everyone, in today's video, I wanna share with you my composition tips when it comes to shooting with a zoom 24 to 70 lens. So today's model is Bodhi, Lydia's on hero makeup, and Dan is behind the camera filming. Let's start shooting. So cute. He was like, hello. <laughs> my first tip is to not always rely on your zoom to compose your photos. I find that it's always better to choose what kind of compression or distortion you want, and then still physically move around with your zoom lens to get the shot that you want. So for example, in this location here, I really want to be able to see all the purple petals on the ground. So I want to shoot with a wider angle focal length so I can see all of that. But I also went to get a close up of Bodhi too. So if I'm at 24 millimeters, I can't get in too close because there will be a lot of distortion. So I'm going to pick to shoot at around 35 to 40 millimeters. So I'll zoom in and out around that focal length while I'm getting photos while also physically moving around. So you're gonna bring your shoulder into your chin. Perfect. I'm getting just a few extra photos. This time I'm, I'm a bit further away from Bodhi to get more of the landscape in the frame. Do you wanna try putting one of your arms up too? Yeah, these sleeves are so pretty. We'll go to Pachasan. <laughs> oh my gosh, that looks so cool there. In this next spot, we have a slightly busier background. So for these photos, I'm gonna shoot at a more zoomed in focal length, like 50, 60, 70 millimeters to create that foreground to background separation and help Bodhi stand out from the background. Typically, zoom lenses have smaller apertures compared to prime lenses. This 24 to 70, for example, has a maximum aperture of f2.8. This means that you need to work more with your location to be able to create that background to foreground separation to help your subject stand out. In these first few photos, the background is quite dark and Bodhi is standing very close to that branch, so the photos look a bit flat. We moved to face towards the sun so our background can be lit up so you can see the texture and bokeh. We also stood away from the branch to create some physical distance between the location and the subject and we ended up with these photos that look much more dynamic and Bodhi stands out in the frame. Yeah, that little spin was so cool. And can you just do one as well if you bring your arms kind of like that? Yeah. And then just glance at me as well there. Beautiful. You like a um like a flamenco dancer? <laughs> beautiful and let's run just up there <laughs> to that spot too. My next tip is to rethink what you're using your focal lengths for. So you might think that with a 24 millimeter you should be shooting wide angle photos and with a 70 millimeter you should be shooting tight headshot photos but I like to kind of mix it up and try different things. So with a 24 millimeter or on the wider end of the lens I actually like getting in nice and close to my subject. So this can give a really interesting perspective to the photos. Perfect. The turkey is like perfectly in the background. That's cool. And then maybe if you could like kind of stretch your arms out there. And can you twist your shoulders to face me a little bit more? Yeah. Yeah, perfect. When rethinking what your focal lengths are used for, something I really like to do with a 70 millimeter is take advantage of that background to foreground separation and get a full body shot as well. Oh, that's so cool. 
Oh, I'm definitely getting things falling in the shots. 100%. And then I'm gonna take a photo like that as well on like the wide end of the lens so I can compare. I swear, this location is just like magical at sunset. When I'm at 70 millimeters, I do love taking advantage of that focal length to take a really beautiful close-up photo. As you can see here, the framing is really nice and I love what the bucket looks like in the background. if you sit just there after the bird after poop. The bird. <laughs> and then you can have both your leg, your feet on the tree stumps. And my last tip is to make the most of the versatility of using a zoom lens. Take it from me, a prime user. It's super important to try and tell a story with the photos that you're taking. And with a 24 to 70, you can do that in one location. So in this spot here, I wanna get like a wide shot. So you can tell that birdie is sitting by a tree. And then I will also zoom into like 70 or 50 millimeters to get those beautiful close-up shots as well. And then can we get one of you leaning over on your knee? Try and get a shot where you can't see as much of the tree in the background as well. So you can still see a slither of the tree so it ties into the other photos that we've been taking, but this is more of like a headshot. So she stands out in the photo. I love that. Sorry, I missed it when you were tucking your hair behind your ear. That looks really good. How are you doing? Hello, friend. <laughs> you want to get in our shot again? And he's like, well, nah. Well, and then maybe we can do one standing there as well. I liked it. You lent in with your hip a little bit more as well. Yeah. And then, yeah, I was going to say, rest your hand on your head. I'll just get one more if you stand out on the end. Or you can stand on the ground so you don't have to balance. Yeah, can we get just like a little bit of movement if you kind of like spin quite fast? Yeah, beautiful. You can smile a little bit too. <laughs> That's all I have for today's composition tips on the 24-70 f2.8 lens. Let me know which one's your favorite one down in the comments below, which one you're gonna try out at your next photo shoot. But as always, thank you so, so much for watching. I make new videos every single week, so I'll see you all next time.